Good morning, Bordeaux Community Church family. Welcome to this, the first of two services this Sunday. I hope I find you all well. Uh, thank you so much for logging in. And whether you're on Facebook or on YouTube, remember to like our page. Remember to share our page for those who are even not a part of Bordeaux Community Church. Church, we thank you for your commitment in giving. If you do want to leave a physical offering, gift, tithe, please come through to the church offices Monday to Friday from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. Otherwise, if you do want to do it from the comfort of your own home, please see the details coming shortly after. Church, we have seen a rise in the COVID-19 cases across the nation of Zimbabwe. Please see the next video, which emphasizes safe practices to follow whilst you're at home and also whilst you're out and about during the day. Protect yourself from coronavirus. It can kill you. There are several methods you can adopt to protect yourself and others from getting the deadly coronavirus. Frequently clean your hands by using an alcohol-based product or soap and water, especially after coughing or sneezing, when caring for the sick, after visiting the toilet, before, during and after the preparation of food, and after handling animals or animal waste. When coughing and sneezing, cover your mouth with a flexed elbow or tissue. If you use tissue, discard it immediately into a closed bin. Avoid the consumption of raw or undercooked meat. Avoid close contact with anyone that has a fever and cough. And if you have fever, cough and difficulty breathing, seek medical care early and share information about any recent travels with your healthcare provider. Let's keep coronavirus out. Church, it is now time for the word. Please get your notepads and your pens ready. But before we dive into the word that God has for us this morning, a bit of praise and worship.
Jesus, maka fani rakuna matu, maka fani rakuna matu. Tino kupai miri ase Jesus, tino kupai miri ase Good morning, Bordel Community Church. Uh, welcome to our Sunday service uh, this week. And thank you very much uh, for uh, attending these important services. And I hope you're taking advantage of them because we now have two services for you. This uh, service, which is uh, focused on, on personal growth and, and family enrichment, and a later service that deals uh, with national issues and gives us guidance how to navigate uh, the current uh, situation we find ourselves uh, in Zimbabwe. I so enjoyed last week, uh, Dr. Mnyeza spoke about fathers lay the values for their family and the children perpetuate the values or implement those values and he uh, drew a parallel uh, with the nation. So I really hope that you are taking advantage of both services and enjoying what God is um, serving you. And I also hope that you are taking time to encourage others to not uh, just passively drop off the grid, but are coming every Sunday to watch the service, are coming to the midweek to do the, the cell groups. And, and I hope you're giving as well, that you uh, continue to give your tithes and your offering, that you continue to investigate the needs that are in the body of Christ and those needs are increasing and that you play your part in meeting those. Um, I want us, if we would then uh, uh, take this morning to, to pray. It's a little bit chilly in the studio this morning, and I'm hoping that uh, uh, your attention and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit is going to keep me nicely warm. But Father, I want to thank you this morning in the name of uh, Jesus Christ for an opportunity once again to come under the instruction of your word, once again to receive from you what is directional to our lives. Lord, I believe you with all my heart that the outcome of our lives is going to be great, that your intervention in our nation and your intervention in our family is guaranteed and that there is going to be a day that we will rejoice because we have been steadfast and have stayed the course with you. I pray for every man and every woman that is listening this morning, every child, every boy, every girl, Father, that you would have a reserve of blessing for them, that, Lord, that you would hear the cry of their heart and attend to it. You said to us in your word that the ear of the Lord is attentive to the cry of the righteous. And I pray, Father, this morning that as the righteous reach out to you, that you would reach out to them and that you would respond. And I thank you uh, this morning that your Holy Spirit will help me, will help us navigate the scriptures and arrive at the exact point that you wanted us to arrive. You're a wonderful God and so we thank you and we lift your name up and we pray all this in the name of Jesus. And I'm uh, hoping that you're saying amen where you are. I want to pick it up right away and, um, and just enjoy what has been going on over the last three weeks. We started speaking about not fainting, uh, picking ourselves up and, and staying the course and going where God wants us to go as far as he wants us to go and at the time that he wants us to get there. And uh, last week I uh, brought um, a very uh, uh, enriching word and I said that let's go deeper rather than retreat rather than go a, a few steps back let's go deeper and um, we uh, read that passage of scripture in Luke chapter 5 where Christ used Peter's boat asked Peter to launch out into the deep 
asked him to cast nets where he had been toiling and up till then had not had results for that night and got an incredible breakthrough. And, um, and we said last week that there's a prophetic instruction and a prophetic exhortation for us to make ourselves available to the service of the kingdom and the things that God wants us to do, number one, but also that we would go a little bit deeper or a ways deeper than we have gone in our walk with God. And what I mean by that is that God no longer wants us to function at a superficial level, but to get the deeper revelation to spend more time in his word, to spend more time in worship so that we uh, will be encouraged to go back and dig one more time in the place that we have worked in, but nothing has come out. And I want to repeat this, that there's some of you that are listening to me and you have lost hope in the area that you're working. You have lost hope in the prayer that you have been praying for. You have lost hope over the child that you've been praying for. You have lost hope in the business venture. You have lost hope in your ministry. And God is saying, I want, because you're making yourself available, I want to encourage you to go back one more time. And we know what happened. And Peter and his uh, friends had such a haul of fish that they couldn't even contain it themselves. And then they had to go out and um, ask their friends to come and, uh, and help them to bring the fish in. The whole purpose of a a documented breakthrough, why I want you to get a breakthrough, why I'm believing God is going to give you a breakthrough, is that if you get one resounding breakthrough in your life, it becomes a reference point that you can use for subsequent challenges and say, if God helped me to slay the bear and if God helped me to kill the lion, he will help me with this uncircumcised Philistine as well. If God sent my firstborn to school, he will help me with the secondborn. If God healed my parent, he will heal my children as well. So the, uh, the, the breakthroughs are supposed to be uh, creators of reference points that we can use whenever we have um, a situation again. As if the, uh, God was, want, was wanting to see how seriously we were taking this new walk of being deeper in him. We have heard this week that the uh, uh, cases of coronavirus in Zimbabwe have increased significantly. And, um, and that's uh, this last week that the statistics have just been coming up from everywhere and we are seeing a rise in the number of people that have contracted this infection. We are seeing a, ram- a rise in the number of people that are testing positive. And so we have now an, a choice. God sits there and say, yes, you have been praying. You have been believing me that the, this country would not be ravaged by this virus. Now you are hearing the statistics. What are you going to do now? What are you going to say now? And I can tell you what I am doing. We are going deeper. So I want us to go into the passage of scripture of Psalm 91. You know, in this church, we ha- we took on a challenge. I love these challenges that you see on, um, on Facebook or wherever. We say, do 100 press-ups for a week and, uh, and see what's going to happen to your body. We took a challenge nearly a year ago, and that challenge was that we would read and prophesy and pray and speak Psalm 91 over our lives. If you haven't been doing that, pick it up and then you do it for a year. But if you have already been doing it, carry on. If you had dropped it off, pick it up and God is going to help us. It's our prophetic gesture and belief that God is going to take care of us in these perilous times. And Psalm 91 in verse 3 says, Surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler, and you shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lays waste at noonday. God, I love the way it starts by saying surely. Surely means guaranteed without a shadow of doubt, as long as he is alive. It says, surely he will deliver you from the fowler's trap and from the destroying plague. And if you move to verse 5, he says, you shall not fear the terror by night. It says that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. I want us to pray this morning. And our service this morning is focused on us believing God and standing in the gap for Zimbabwe 
and the coronavirus and COVID-19 infection and the surge that we have heard this last week. Father, we want to thank you that we believe you above all. We doubt the devil, Father, and we know that your word is true. You said your truth shall be our buckler. And Father, even though war break out on every front, even then shall we be confident that you, our God, will step in the situation. And Father, we make a profound declaration in Zimbabwe that you are going to make us a reference nation in the way that you will deal with us with this COVID-19 situation. And we thank you, Lord, that even as we go into this service, that we will steady ourselves in our faith and that we will come before you and, and announce to you that we believe you, we rely on you, and we're absolutely dependent on your saving hand. And we know, Father, that we shall have a godly outcome in the name of Jesus. The Bible says that, those that know their God shall do exploits in Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32. And so we are looking forward to a season right now where we are not going to waver and we are not going to buckle in our knees and, and stand and say that we know God. We know God and God is going to come through. You know, uh, the virus is here and it's like unlike anything that we have seen. And all the challenges that we face that are like that should not be taken just in the natural. If we take this thing in the natural, we are in distress and we are in defeat. And God is looking at, we've been talking over the last few weeks, and I said to you that the mandate to intercede for a nation is not given to the whole nation. It is given to the body of Christ. If you and I will take this mandate right now and stand in the gap for our nation. The, the Bible says that when God was, uh, when the Solomon was dedicating his temple and God said, if pestilence would come upon you, it's as if war would break up against you. If I stop up the heavens and there are no rains, and it says, if my people who are called under those circumstances of imminent danger unto a nation, if my people, those people that carry my name, the Bible says that to them that believed him gave he the power to be called the sons of God. So if the sons of God would come right now when we hear that there are 2,000 plus cases in this last week, if the sons of God would come, it says, if if my people were called by my name would humble themselves and pray, and we are going to pray today, and call upon my name and turn from their wicked ways, I will heal their land. And so we're believing God. I know that God will heal Zimbabwe. I know that God, Zimbabwe is going to be written in the books as having had an escape route, not because of how clever we are, not because of how resourced we are, but simply because we believe God and trust him. I want to take you back to some things that happened in this country when, when we uh, had the HIV pandemic. This country was recorded at one point as having the fastest rate of HIV infections in the world. At some rate, we had more than 12% of our population, every one in 10 people, was infected with HIV and AIDS, and we were transmitting it to babies and, and young men, and we, we, our population um, our age, um, what's the word, our life expectancy dropped down to where it became 33 years for a man. 33 years was the life expectancy of a Zimbabwean male. And all that came, and, 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 and yet people stood, and people prayed, and people believed God. And I want to read something to you, and I want to use it to energize us for the threat that we are currently facing. It says, Zimbabwe has one of the highest HIV prevalences in sub-Saharan Africa at 12.7% with 1.3 million people living with HIV in 2018. Terrible statistic. In 2018, though, 38 new HIV infections, which are down from 62,000 in 2010. So in just a period of eight years, we had halved the number of new infections of HIV. And this was the reason. Behavior change, responsible people, high treatment coverage, responsible government, and prevention of mother-to-child transmissions are all thought to be responsible for this decline. I want to say this to you, Zimbabweans. I want to say this to you, Borodo Community Church. If we, in this pandemic, have 
responsible people and a supportive government, we're going to have an incredible outcome. If we have responsible people, that means you and I being responsible and we have our authorities doing what is the right thing, we're going to have an incredible outcome. And, and they ended in that article saying Zimbabwe is making a strong progress towards the United Nations 1990-90 targets. As of 2018, 90% of people in Zimbabwe are aware of their status. They know the danger that's lurking. They have been tested, that means. And more than 95% of those diagnosed were on treatment. God saw to it that there was help available for everyone, 95%. Of the people diagnosed on treatment, 87% were virally suppressed. It means that the 87% of people that were on treatment were no longer able to transmit their virus. Their virus had become contained. This is a miracle, meaning that they are likely to be in good health and won't pass the HIV on to anyone else. And overall, this equates to 88% of all people living in Zimbabwe being on treatment and 62% of all HIV positive people being virally suppressed. We have a track record. And Father, we thank you for what you did for us with HIV. And we thank you, Father, that even then you continue with this HIV to reduce the number of people infected, to reduce the number of people that can transmit it, and to reduce the, increase the number of those that have viral suppression in Jesus' name. I read you that statistic, my brothers and sisters, simply to show you that from a time where we were considered one of the worst statistics in the world, we are now considered as some that have had one of the greatest interventions. And if God could do it then, he can do it once again for us right now. So here are the figures that we got in yesterday's statistics that 22,034 new cases of coronavirus, COVID cases in Zimbabwe. 30, 26 people have died so far and 510 have recovered. But here's something else that we want to pray against and we want to pray for. The Imperial College of London made a, a mathematical model that predicts what is going to happen to Zimbabwe if things remain as they are, or if not a significant intervention is carried out. It predicts that 33,000 people are going to die in Zimbabwe. It predicts that 96% of the population will pick up the infection in the course of the pandemic. And I know that this is a mathematical model. Imperial College tried to say that, oh, we, there are modifications to it that we can apply, but this is what it looks like if nothing is happening in Zimbabwe. Well, I'm saying now that it's not going to be the case that nothing is happening in Zimbabwe because we are going to pray and we are going to seek wisdom from God and we are going to intervene by the wisdom that God is going to give us and this is going to be averted. See, no matter how well researched or how scientific or how logical and how respectable opinions are, no one knows exactly because no one has been down this road before. And whenever you find a situation where no one has been down the road that you are about to walk, it is the correct time for you to turn to God and seek his face and hear what God has to say about a situation because God is never without counsel. I want you to just write it down somewhere. Say to yourself, say to your God never runs out of wisdom. God is wisdom. God never runs out of counsel. And so these 33,000 predicted to be, who are going to die in Zimbabwe with 96% uh, infected. I want us to take it spiritually this morning and say, Father, we are asking you in the name of Jesus. Here is the writing. Here is the prediction. We are hearing the report in the community. But we are asking you, Father, to intervene in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That, Father, even the ones that have died up till now, may they be the only ones. 
Father, I pray that the ones who are infected right now would all recover in the name of Jesus. And I pray, Father, that as you controlled the transmission from mother to child, controlled the transmission from individual to individual with HIV, Father, that you would curb, that you would arrest this coronavirus and stop it having its way in Zimbabwe. And Father, we're asking you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, and I want us to read in Joshua chapter 3, it says, verse 1, this is Joshua with God's people about to go into the promised land. But like the scientists of today, like the medical people of today, like the epidemiologists of today, like all the, the social workers and the health community workers, they didn't know or had not been down the road that they were about to go. And so Joshua on the unction of the Spirit of God, having been spoken to by God, comes and he says, and he commanded the people, saying, Tomorrow when you see the ark of the Lord your God and the priest and the Levites bearing it, you shall move from your place and go after it. When God speaks to us, and, and God has spoken to us, and I'm going to share with you some of the direction he's given us, yet keep a space between you and it of about 2,000 cubits by measure. Do not come near the ark so that you may know the way that you must go. For you have not passed this way before. And Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders amongst you. Zimbabweans, I'm saying to you, sanctify yourselves. Come to a place where you're seeking God. Come to a place where we are praying Psalm 91 over your family. Come to a place where you are believing the instruction that you're going to be given. And you will see God do wonders in our midst. If we seek God fervently, God will make a move even in this season that will direct us with safety on a road that no one has gone before. If we seek God fervently, in this season, God will give us a direction and, and a favorable outcome on a road that no one else has traveled before. You know, we have been praying for 90 days, and I keep coming back to it. This 90 days is talking about a change in Zimbabwe. This 90 days is, is delivering a Zimbabwe that we have always longed for, that we have always believed that God has given to us and, and ha have not touched and, and in this 90 day, we are going to see change in the politics. We're going to see change in the economics. We're going to ch change in the health sector. We must be praying about this because God said to Joshua, tell the people just to obey, to sanctify themselves. Stop being selfish. Stop living for yourself. Stop listening to your flesh more than your spirit and sanctify yourself. He says, for God is going to do wonders in your midst. I know that God is going to do wonders in our nation regarding this coronavirus. I know that as I'm talking about coronavirus, I'm also talking about your life. I'm also talking about my own life. I'm talking about other circumstances. The Red Sea will part in the name of Jesus. The wall of Jericho will crumble in the name of Jesus. The Jordan will part in the name of Jesus. The siege around Samaria will end in the name of Jesus and glory will go to God. Glory will go to God. The Red Sea of our lives will part. The activity for the believer is we must come and seek his face fervently. I'm praying that as I'm speaking right now, you are making a commitment to taking an hour of prayer, to pray for this nation, to pray. Here's how I pray with my family. We pray Psalm 91, and we say, Father, we pray that over this COVID-19, we are not going to shed a tear. Father, we pray that in our family, in our beloved, in our friends, in those that pray for us, and those that we love, that you would intervene, and Father, that not one of them will be lost. And now we have expanded that prayer to pray for the vulnerable parts of Zimbabwe and the vulnerable community in Zimbabwe. We're praying that the healthcare workers would be preserved by you. We're praying for the widow and the orphan. We're praying for those with comorbid conditions, sufferers who are of HIV, those who are diabetic, those who have chronic chest infections that have heart conditions. We're praying for every single one of them in the name of the Lord that God who went before the children of Israel is going to go before us and that there will not be a devastation and we will arrive at a safe place in Jesus' name. And so the first point, 
that I want to share with you is that we have never been down this road before, but God has. We have not been down this road before, but God has. When you see him talking about the pestilence and the fowlers and the plagues and the things that stalk, God has had experience with this and knows how to recover us from it. And so we bless his name because we believe in that he is going to do the same for us. And the second point I want to make this morning is that God is not confounded the same way we are confounded. If you read in Nahum chapter 1 verse 3, it says, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and he does not by any means acquit the guilty. Now listen to the next part. It says, The Lord has his way in the tempest and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. He rebukes the sea and makes it dry and dries up all rivers. What is God saying here? You know, in Zechariah somewhere, the Lord said that, If something is marvelous, I believe it's Zechariah chapter 8. It says, if something is marvelous to you, don't think that is marvelous to me. This is God saying, I am God. I live in a place that is unlike yours as far as the heavens are above the earth. And he said that, here he says that God has his way in the tempest and the storm. Earlier this year, when we, when we started uh, hearing about uh, COVID-19, we prayed for this nation. And God gave us a word he said, and, and showed us that either way, God has victory over a storm. In Matthew chapter 8, you recall the storm that the disciples were on the boat and the boat is now being tossed back and forth by the waves. And Jesus exercised option number one. And option number one is he got up and he said, storm, be calm. And the storm calmed. And the disciples said, who is this guy? That all manner of storms that he speaks to them and they stop. And I'm believing God that in portions and in pockets of our community, God is going to absolutely get up and command the storm to stop. And I'm believing that. And I want you to understand that he says that he has his way in the tempest and the storm. If I read for you Psalm 107, verse 29. So option number one is God completely stops the storm. I don't know what you're going through in your life, um, but if it's a storm, God has the ability to just stop the storm. He gets up, he points at the storm, and I'm praying for you this morning that some of you that are listening this morning, that the Father would walk in by his Holy Spirit and because of the completed work of Jesus Christ and point at your storm and say, peace be still and have that storm stop in your life. Psalm 107 verse 29 says the following. He calms the storm. It talks, if you, if you go up, it says, it talks about sailors. It says, those who go up, who go down to the sea in ships, who do business in great waters, these ones see the works of God and his wonders in the deep. For he commands and raises the stormy wind, which lifts up the waves of the sea. They mount up to the heavens and they go down again to the depths. Their soul melts because of the trouble. It says the sailors, imagine that being on a, on a ship in those days and you're going and sailing at distance that you don't know. There's no radio communication and you just, the people know that you have arrived when you arrive and your family know you are, you are safe when you come back six months later. And it says God commands these winds to go up and down and their souls melt in them. They reel to and fro and stagger like drunken men. You know, I want to tell you right now, our preparedness as a nation for this COVID is like like drunken men because we haven't had the resources. We haven't had the cohesion of policy. we We don't have facilities that are fully equipped yet to deal with it. And we reel to and fro and stagger like drunken men. They are at their wit's end. Then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble. You hear that? 
They, they, then they cry out to the. They didn't go to the engineer of the plane, they, of the of the of the boat. They didn't go to the captain. They didn't go. It says that then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble, and He brings them out of their distresses, and He calms the storm, so that the waves are still. Then they are glad because they are quiet. So He guides them to their desired haven. He guides them to their desired haven. He says, although these figures are coming out and although this statistic is coming, although there's a new outbreak in Brazil, although there's a new outbreak in, uh, in the United States, although they're telling us this is just the first wave for Zimbabwe, a second wave will come. Let's not start by running to the statisticians and the engineers. Let's run. They cry out, verse 28, to the Lord in their trouble. He says, and he calms the storm. And so its waves are still and they're glad because they're quiet and he guides them exactly to the place where they're going. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you would guide us to the place of a safe haven in this nation. Give us wisdom in this week. Give us wisdom in this month. Guide us, Father. Send us insight. Send us collaboration and cooperation. But our insistence and our confidence is in you and in the name of Jesus. So God exercised option number one, which was to actually stop the storm. But look at option number two. For who can stop God from saving with many or from saving with few? In, op in option number, number two in Acts chapter 27, Paul is caught in a storm. And, and he's in a storm with his fellows because they have actually been disobedient to God. God had told them not to sail out. They went out anyhow, and now they're caught in a storm. And listen to what Paul says in Acts chapter 27. It says, but after a long abstinence, verse 21, but after a long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them and said, men, you should have listened to me when you said and, and not have sailed for Crete and incurred this disaster and loss. There's policymakers who should have listened to what uh, professionals and experts were saying. But nonetheless, he says, now I urge, I urge you to take heart for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. Therefore, for there stood by me this night an angel of God, the God to whom I belong and whom I serve, saying, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all those who sail with you. Therefore, take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. However, we must run aground on a certain island. Men have disobeyed. Men have been negligent in setting up. Men have ignored what was the right thing to do. They set out and the storm hits. The storm comes and they're not prepared. And Paul says, in the night when I was praying, I want you to see the pattern again. The instruction and the answer is given to the church, is given to those that have denied themselves food and that are praying before God. And he says, and God says to him with an angel, he says, don't worry. This time I'm evoking option number two. I'm not stopping the storm. You're going to go through the storm, but you're going to be preserved through the storm. He says, only this vessel of rebellion that you have used is going to be destroyed, but every man is going to be kept alive. And prophetically, I'm believing that our weak health system is going to be shaken this time around and be replaced with a credible and a working health system. But the lives of the workers, the lives of the staff, the lives of our patients are going to be preserved and I believe God, and so, like Paul says, therefore take heart, men, for I believe God that it will be just as it was told me. And I'm praying, Father, that we would take heart, that you would help us to take heart, because it should be to us, as you have told us, that you will preserve us. God will not allow us to be tried beyond what we can endure. 
with man, what we are talking about this morning is impossible. But with God, nothing is impossible. And so I'm praying this morning and I'm asking that you would join me that God would not allow us to be tried beyond our capacity to withstand and that even in this storm, God will show us a miraculous way out. You know, it's if we are considering what's happening now and if we are looking for signs from God, I just found it completely amazing that the African Union Special Envoy on COVID is from Zimbabwe. The special envoy who was chosen to lead the charge for the African Union on COVID is from Zimbabwe. I don't believe that God would choose a Zimbabwean to lead the charge and leave his own country to go through the worst possible circumstances and to have a devastating statistic. I don't believe that. And in fact, I believe the contrary. If you know the history of the brother who has been chosen by the Lord, you know that he has been away from Zimbabwe for a while. And I saw a parallel in Genesis chapter 50 where the difficult circumstances that Joseph had had that drove him out of his country, that made his kinsmen uh, feel and his brothers feel uh, embarrassed and afraid to approach him now that he was in a position of influence. And yet he turned around, and I think that it's worth reading. And I want us to pray for our special envoy on, on, on COVID, that God would uh, put resource, wisdom, guidance, everything that is necessary to arrest the spread of this thing in Zimbabwe and in Africa. Ex Genesis chapter 50, when Joseph had been uh, ignored by his brothers, sold, treated badly, his institution ravaged, and he says, do not be afraid. I'm not in the place of God to judge you or to be vindictive against you for what you did to me. But as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. In order to bring it about as it is this day, to save many people alive. Therefore, do not be afraid. I will provide you. I will provide for you and your little ones. And he comforted them and he spoke kindly to them. Father, we pray for our brother, the special envoy on COVID for the African Union, that you would help him to be as Joseph, that he would bring it about as you have ordered it today to save many people and that he would provide for us and our little ones because of the situation and the position that you have placed him. Pray that you preserve his own life, that you preserve his circumstances, and Father, that everything that concerns him would receive attention from you, Lord, because he is appointed for a time such as this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The third point I want us to go to now, and I'm hoping that you are uh, moving with me as we are believing God for Zimbabwe. It says, when your perceived capacity is less than the assignment that lies ahead, move on. When what you need to carry out the job that is at hand, you don't have enough to carry out the job as and still move on. Because in those circumstances, God will deal with us according to what is in our heart, not what is in our hands. Whenever you come to a situation where you feel God is calling you to do something that you don't have the resources to do, God is still not out of ideas and not out of plans. God has got a structure that he is going to put in place that is going to change everything when the day of analysis comes. Listen to Deuteronomy chapter 20. And I think, I, I, I just, you know, the whole world has struggled with protective personal equipment for COVID. The whole world has struggled with testing. 
The whole world has struggled with healthcare workers being infected. And, and here in Zimbabwe, the, it's, it's, it's likely to be more if, if the Lord doesn't intervene. You know, Pastor spoke about a perfect storm. We don't have the money. We currently, and we must be praying about this, have a strike of the nurses. We currently have hospitals that are not working. We currently have a ministry of health that has got a lot of changes that have occurred. We currently don't have essential drug supplies. We currently don't have isolation centers that have been completed completely. We currently do not have most of the medication that has been documented to be of some effect. We currently don't have. We currently don't have. But here's what God has. He says, when you go out to battle, Deuteronomy chapter 20, against your enemies, and you see horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them, for the Lord your God is with you, who brought you up from the land of Egypt. And so it shall be that when you are on the verge of battle, that the priest, again the church, shall approach you and speak to the people. And he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, hear, O Zimbabwe, today you are on the verge of a battle with a deadly virus with your enemies. Do not let your heart grow faint. Do not be afraid and do not uh, tremble or be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight against your enemies and save you. May the Lord save us. May the Lord save us. This scripture describes all about how God can deal with us in this situation. My fourth point is that just because God has capacity and has given us promises does not mean that we sit back and do nothing. Jehoshaphat was surrounded by three kings that were greater than his capacity to fight. And in, um, in the word of God, it says that do not be afraid or dismayed because of this great multitude in Chronicles, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Tomorrow go down against them and behold, they come up from the cliff of Ziz and you shall find them there in the valley before the wilderness of Jeruah. You shall not fight in this battle. Set yourselves and stand and see the salvation that the Lord your God will give you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. The Bible talks here about God has arrayed his hosts in heaven against your enemy, but you still must show up. You still must wear the protective gear. You still must make a plan for the week. You still must get the government system working. You still must uh, educate and train people. And only when we are moving by faith as if we were going to fight will God come and. And this applies to every aspect of your life. You, you don't curl up in your bed and be depressed and cry about your circumstance. Get up in God and act as if you have the capacity to deal with it. And God will catch you in that process of exercising your faith and then he'll add wind to your sails and you'll be victorious because the battle is always the Lord's and the victory will be given to us. Our special envoy gave us a very important acronym and I want to share it with you this, this morning so that uh, we apply as if we are going to fight and we believe God will come through. Uh, with the acronym is for COVID is I-T-T-I-T. -T -T. Inform, test, trace, isolate, and treat. Inform, test, trace, isolate, and treat. And these are I want to bring you the godly parallel to this. Inform, announce, herald, teach, persuade people. Blow the trumpet so that people will change their behavior. You know, we have been told by the experts that for COVID virus to infect you effectively, you have to have a face-to-face -face conversation 
with an unmasked person for 15 minutes who is a distance of a meter or less from you. The highest infection is face-to-face -face conversation, no protection, masks, 15 minutes and less than a meter apart. It let's inform the people to change their behavior. Masks, church, are not controversial pieces of equipment. They are life-saving. Masks protect you from spreading the infection to others in a big way and protect others, protect you from being from receiving in a in a in a less but a still significant way. Every one of us must wear a mask all the time when we are in a public place because the greatest act of love for others is because you don't know your status, you protect what is being delivered from your mouth and your nose from getting to other people. Let us respect the social distancing and, and stay at least a meter and a half from people people that we don't know, people that are not in our family. And let's enforce this. Let's forget this people thing of hugging each other and shaking hands. This is not the season. This is not the season. Let's wear our mask to protect others predominantly. Let's keep a distance so that my droplets drop to the ground before they reach the other person's eye, nose, and mouth. And then let us keep our hands clean, carry a hand sanitizer in your pocket. Every, a, an average person touches their face 16 times an hour. Touching your eyes, which is where it goes through your nose and your mouth. 16 times an hour. Some people as much as 25 times an hour just to fix your glasses, just to wipe your eyes. So your hands become a very important tool of transmitting infection. So if I touch your surface, if I open a doorknob, if I open a car door, I must sanitize before I touch myself because that's how I transmit. But we must inform. Inform your children. Inform your parents. Inform the church that we must wear a mask. We must have ex excellent hand hygiene. We must distance ourselves. You know, the, the Alabama cut its rate of infection by 50% just by wearing masks. The greatest act of love for others is to wear masks. The greatest act of love for yourself is to clean hands. The greatest act of love for our community is to keep a safe distance, inform. Pray that we would have testing in this country that is effective so that people who have symptoms and people who, <coughs> who have had contact with people with COVID would know and would take extra caution to diminish transmission. Trace every contact and be responsible as a believer to volunteer your own self that I believe I was in contact with so-and-so that's unwell. And don't then go onto a combi when you know that you have been in contact with someone that uh, was tested positive for COVID. But trace every contact, volunteer information. Oh, we were in such a place, we were with so-and-so, so that these numbers can be controlled. Isolate effectively. Make sure, you know, it's not so difficult. Most people who are, in, are contracting this infection are able to be dealt with in their homes. And all it needs is for you to remain in your room, to have the windows open, for you to wear a mask when you go into the public places with your family, the kitchen, the lounge, and not to sit in those places for more than 15 minutes, and then to wipe the surfaces that are common, door knobs, toilet seats, and to use your own ablution. This is what God is, uh, you know, <laughs> I saw a scripture in Leviticus chapter 13, verse 45, and I found it completely amazing. And it was, it was speaking about lepers in those days, and it says the leper must cover his upper lip. He must wear a mask. Now, the leper on whom the sore is, his clothes shall be torn and his head made bare, and he shall cover his moustache and cry, unclean, unclean, and he shall be unclean. So he's saying that the leper was supposed to cover himself and, and, and declare to those around him to move away and say, unclean, unclean. And this is the same for us. If you're not sure, or if you're COVID positive, with only mild symptoms, 
cover yourself with a mask so that your neighbor is not infected. Even Leviticus knew about it. And then let's pray that we have treatment for those cases that complicate and those cases that need treatment. Let's blow the trumpet and warn the people. Let people change their behavior, wear masks, sanitize, and keep their distance. Let's prepare as if we had all the resources. You know, Abraham and his son were going up to sacrifice on the mountain. The son said, so where is the sacrifice? And, God, and Abraham says, the Lord will provide. I want us to pray for a specific group of people that the God would help this nation to protect and reward the healthcare worker. We've had such high numbers amongst health staff, nurses in particular, who have contracted COVID, and we want to pray for them this morning. But that, that government, remember I said that responsible people and a supportive government will give us an incredible and a godly outcome. And I'm praying that this morning that Healthcare workers would be provided with the tools that they need for their trade. That they would be affirmed and be thanked for being frontline workers. That they would be acknowledged and rewarded. I pray that they would get risk allowance for the work that they are doing. And that they are adequately prepared, uh, protected at every time with protective gear. That all these insurance companies, and I thank the ones that have come to give life policies to healthcare workers, that there's more that can be done. And that, that there'd be facilities to care for them when they fall ill. Right now, when a nurse or a doctor falls sick, there isn't a specific place that they should be taken care of. And it is not right to to, to, to be able to give service to others and not be able to receive the service when you need it yourself. You know, 1 uh, Corinthians chapter 9, verse 10 says, Every farmer who tills the land, tills the land with the hope of enjoying part of what they are growing. And it's the same. When I have medical students and I teach them about appendix, at the back of my mind, I'm saying, understand how appendix looks like. Understand the complications. Understand how urgent it is. Because one day, I have a motive behind me that should I get an appendix infection myself, I'm hoping that one of these students will come quickly and say, I know him. He was my teacher. And I'm going to do it. And I know exactly what to do. But war, sad is the day that I have that infection and come and they say, Oh, no, you can't uh, be admitted. You can't afford to go into this hospital. Oh, no, all your doctors that you trained have left the country. Every one of these healthcare workers have, must be taken care of, must be taken care of. Provide them with tools. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for nurse, for doctor, for nurse aide, for laboratory scientist, for pharmacist, for ambulance driver, for rapid reaction team, for city of Harare, for Parinyatwa and, and, and Harare Hospital and Pilo and UBH and Chitungiza Hospital and the provincial hospitals and the district hospitals. We pray for every gardener, every sweeper in those institutions, for professor and heads of department, that Father, that you would protect them against this pandemic in the name of Jesus. But Father, that you would give them the tools, give them the protective equipment, give them the things that prevent them from getting infection, but give them the tools they need to help their, their, their patients with the oxygen and the masks and, and the drugs and the experimental and the documented drugs, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Muzimbabwe, Baba, Tinichi Kumbiro, Chatnoya, Pamberpe, Uso, Wenyu, Mangwana, Anu, Kutuwa, Shandi, Vemu, Utanu, Kusawana, Munga, Anu, Raskiro, Anu, Upenyu, Wake, As, Baba, Wa, Shandi, Waka, Dekara, Nenzgui, so, nezu uchapupu okuti zinu za wanoda, zhiripa, zhipo nengu ya zinufa nangu zhiripo. We are crying to you, Father. We know our country is, is broke. We know our country doesn't have resources. But we know, Father, that you are the owner of the cattle on a thousand hills. Silver and gold are yours. Father, you can open up the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing upon us, such as we have no room enough to contain. Imindimi musiku wazo, Sebaba. Chikumbiro chedu mangwanana. 
Bananas, Kutibatsirai Vashandiwe Mzimbabwe. By helping these workers, Father, we know that you are going to help your children. You are going to help this nation. Tino dzokurura mnamato wedu baba. Tino dzokurura mnamato wedu kutukusava ni mwano o Zimbabwe. Acha shaika, acha raskira na upenyu. We have said that the 26 that have gone and others that have not reported, Father, let them extend your hand and say enough as you stop the angel of death when um, uh, David had committed the sin, Father, as he stretched his hand over Jerusalem to strike Jerusalem down and you said enough. Father, I pray that in the name of Jesus you would pronounce enough over Zimbabwe. You would pronounce enough over Zimbabwe, Father, that no more lives will be lost. And finally, I want to urge the churches that this, the church has always had the mandate to heal the sick. Matthew chapter 10 tells us that you must heal the sick. And so let the churches set up facilities to help church members. Most of our patients only need isolation until their symptoms go. And set up three packs as a church and say, we are taking this house and it's going to be an isolation center for our church. And in the isolation center, prepare three packs, a hygiene pack to clean with sanitizer to clean the surfaces and so on. And a food pack, easy to boil and make food for the people that will be isolating there. And a medicine pack. We can help you with the medicine pack. For people to, to, to use while in there. But it is the mandate of the, the don't leave it to the government. Let the church of God come to the front now. Let us show our love for the brethren. Let us show our compassion. And say, in our church, I am prophesying with little resources, if you move out and say we are setting this up to protect God's people, God will come and sponsor that venture. Every church in Zimbabwe, let us come and set up an information for our church members. Uh, uh, introduce them to testing and tracing, isolation and treatment. But your role as a church is to set up an inn Sometimes it's just someone who is infected, is not sick, but doesn't want to spread to their children. They need a place where they can go to. The church should say, let's not wait for the government. Let the government catch us up while we are on our way. We are the ones that have got the, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. And I keep saying, it's the church. It's the church. And if we do this, the Bible says, listen to this in, in the book of Acts. All the believers were one in heart and mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions was their own, but they shared everything they had. With great power, the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And God's grace so powerfully worked in them that there were no needy persons amongst them. God's grace so powerfully worked in them that there were no needy persons among them. And they saw, if we would come, surrender resources, give in kind, give in cash, but let's set up these facilities to help in our nation. I'm believing God that the angel of death, of death will be averted on Zimbabwe, but I'm believing God also that healthcare workers are going to be preserved. I'm believing God that those with chronic conditions are not going to be infected, they're not going to die. I'm believing God that the poor, the orphan, and those that normally do not have access in our country are going to have access. I'm believing God that you and I are going to be preserved, but I'm believing God that we will take this message and prophetically believe that God, there is a intervention of the cross on Corona, and God will come out on top, and this condition will come out below. Thank you so much this week. I pray that you disseminate this message and I pray that God really does his counsel in our nation because I know that responsible people with a supportive leadership are going to get a godly outcome. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, brethren, for being with us this week and um, for listening to this message, this prophetic message that God is going to deal with coronavirus and COVID-19 in Zimbabwe. 
But I don't just want God to deal uh, with the things of our flesh and the things of our health. I want God to deal with things of our heart and our soul and our spirit as well. And so I'm praying and asking you this morning that uh, you would, if you have not given your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, that you would do so this morning. And just that there's no more time to waste. There's no more time to uh, uh, move between different opinions. Jesus Christ is Lord. He came and died for us so that we would have salvation. And if you'll accept him today, just by simply saying, Jesus, I receive the gift of salvation. I submit my life to you. Guide me from now on that I may end up with you, but I may have help while I live my life. If you are the, the one praying this prayer, I ask you to, to, to just contact the numbers on the screen there and we'll pray with you. But this is no longer the time to miss salvation. We need to give our lives to the Lord. And I pray that you would. Thank you in Jesus' name. Church, we have come to the end of our first service. Thank you so much for tuning in. Remember, if you have children between the age of 6 to 12, there are children's services on these very same platforms. And if you have any youths, Form 1 to Form 6, there are services that are relevant for them as well. But also stay tuned for the second service. I promise you, you will be blessed. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.